We've had questions asked recently about three-phase installations and what happens if the neutral connection is lost. In particular, why is equipment damaged? As well as asking what happens if the neutral connection is lost, questions have asked how we can actually lose the neutral, why the equipment becomes damaged and steps that we can take to prevent problems from happening in the first place. We should begin by reminding ourselves about single phase circuits. In the no fault circuits shown here, we know that whatever current leaves the line terminal will always return to the neutral terminal, no matter how many loads are attached. And a fault free single phase circuit will always be balanced. The neutral current will always equal the line current. More on this soon. And we've left the earth or CPC off the drawings just for clarity. When we talk about single phase circuits losing a neutral, we're looking at problems in the final circuit part of an installation, the wiring after the circuit breaker. A break in the neutral in a single phase circuit after the circuit breaker will result in zero amps current flow. If the neutral to the cooker, for example, is broken, the cooker will not work. Yes, there might still be electric at the cooker, but it will not be damaged, it just stops working. Single phase has just one sinusoidal waveform on the conductors. In the UK, this is at a frequency of 50 cycles per second, often called 50 Hertz. We will use RMS voltages in the video, so the voltage will swing between plus and minus 230 volts AC. Our test meters are set up to measure in RMS voltages, root means square, and this is explained in another video. For now, a 230 volt domestic socket will give us a voltage of about 230 to 240 volts RMS. The black line represents the neutral or zero point for the circuit. A three phase waveform is shown here. It has three cyclical waveforms, which we've called L1, L2 and L3. They are still at 50 cycles per second but each phase is 120 degrees offset from the others. The interesting thing with a three phase circuit is that a perfectly balanced three phase load will remain balanced even with a lost neutral connection and the voltages will also remain balanced at 230 volts AC. A motor circuit might be a typical example as displayed on the top chart. Let us compare this to an unbalanced installation with a loss of neutral, where each phase is demanding different currents because the loads on each phase are all different. One phase might be feeding the lights, another phase will supply power to the kitchen ovens, and the third phase is fed to the offices. With a loss of neutral, the voltages can vary by significant amounts as shown on the lower chart. A reminder then of the voltages available at a three phase distribution board. Any phase to neutral is 230 volts nominal. Taking a phase from a breaker plus a neutral plus an earth will give you a single phase supply for a circuit. And any phase measured to earth or CPC is also 230 volts. If we measure phase to phase, we will have 400 volts. L1 to L2, L1 to L3, and L2 to L3 will all be 400 volts. Let's look at Kirchhoff's law and one of the fundamental rules of electricity. This law tells us that the sum of the currents flowing into a point are mathematically equal to the sum of the currents flowing out of the point. So here, 11 amps flows into a point, so 11 amps must flow out. It cannot be any other way. Remembering Kirchhoff's law, in a balanced three-phase circuit, the phases are all 120 degrees apart. Current flowing along L1 phase can return along L2 and L3 phases. It doesn't need to go along the neutral. The circuit on the left is balanced, so when the L1 phase is more positive than the others, 4 amps is flowing into the common point and 4 amps is flowing out along L2 and L3. 
no current is flowing along the neutron. The drawing on the right shows an unbalanced three-phase circuit where different phases have different loads. Think of the lights, the kitchen ovens and the office from a moment ago. Now there's an imbalance. 4 amps flows in on L1 but only 3 amps flows out on L2 and L3. The excess current must flow along the neutron. Let's look at that in pictures. With balanced phases, 4 amps flows through the load on each phase. This might be motor windings as an example. As a result, there is zero neutral current. This is why some motor circuits are 4 wire only, 3 phases plus earth, with no neutral in the cable. But as soon as we have mixed loads, we need a neutral. Each phase here is loaded differently, and during the course of the day, the loads on each phase may change. People will turn lights on and off, the ovens might be turned on, someone switches a computer off and so on, and all the out of balance currents will flow along the neutral conductor. This simple three phase plus neutral distribution board is fed from the incoming supply. There are three single phase 230 volt circuits coming from the distribution board, each on a separate circuit breaker and each on a different phase. Or this could just as easily be a subboard fed from a distribution board. It makes no difference. Looking at the current flow for circuit 1 only, we have the current flowing into the distribution board from the supply, through the circuit breaker on the L1 phase and on to the connected 230 volt circuits. A 230 volt circuit is a phase plus a neutral on this drawing. So back along the neutral to the neutral bar and then out of the installation to the supply transformer. And you can imagine a very similar route for circuit 2 and circuit 3. On this slide we can see that the neutral from the supply has been damaged. There is now no neutral connection at the distribution board. But the neutrals for all the single phase circuits are still intact, still in place. Each single phase circuit is still connected to the neutral bar and each circuit is still connected to its own circuit breaker. The current flowing through L1 would like to flow through the attached number 1 circuits but their exit from the installation is prevented by the broken neutral on the upstream side of the distribution board. The current cannot complete the circuit back to the neutral. But the electricity will try another path. It will always attempt to complete a circuit and find its way back to the source, back to where it came from, the supply transformer. And look, the path can now be completed through the neutral bar and back through another phase, L3 shown here. That is a path back to the source, it doesn't need the neutral connection and now our problems begin. Here is the complete flow from the incoming supply. Follow the white stripes from the supply side of the distribution board through the circuit breaker at L1 and down to the 230 volt circuits and equipment at number 1. Along the neutral with a white stripe to the neutral bar. Through the neutral bar and onto the neutral conductor to circuit number 3. Through the appliances and equipment at such a circuit 3 and back up to the grey wire to L3 circuit breaker. Through the distribution board and out of the property back to the supply transformer. At the distribution board L1 to L3 is 400 volts and with no neutral the 400 volts is now across the 230 volt circuits. In practice the current will also flow through the circuits at number 2 and through L2 circuit breaker. And with 400 volts between each pair of phases the 230 volt circuits are now exposed to the full 400 volts. Equipment and accessories will be damaged and persons may be in danger of electric shock. Not a lot of 230 volt equipment can withstand over voltages of 300 volts plus, even 400 volts plus. And current will try to find a path through any conductive surface, pipework, metallic structural parts, as insulation begins to overheat and break down. In many cases, equipment will be permanently damaged. Why has this happened? Why are the voltages suddenly at 400 volts? In a perfectly balanced circuit, 
they will stay at 230 volts. They didn't need the neutral before, they don't need neutral now. A balanced motor circuit will stay in balance without a neutral path. An unbalanced load is very different. There will be varying loads on each circuit. As the loads vary and as the current demands vary, the voltages will try and follow Ohm's law to match the loads and currents on different phases. The neutral point has been left on the drawings as a reference for you to show how the voltages have moved away from a balanced 230 volt state. The result, as you can see, is that the voltages are no longer centered and can be well in excess of 230 volts. These are called vector diagrams and the length of the arrow shows the magnitude of the voltage on the equipment and appliances that are on each phase. The equipment can be exposed to maximum voltages across the phases as shown here where the vectors are at their maximum length. At this point equipment damage is highly likely, almost inevitable as equipment overheats with the risk of fire. Hopefully this simple introduction has given you some understanding of how it happens. Always be aware of the dangers of lost neutrals in three phase installations. 230 volt equipment and appliances will not normally tolerate an over voltage of these magnitudes and even small over voltages can impact on the safety and reliability of items. Carry out regular installation checks. But don't just look at equipment and cables, physically check and test, do it properly. Make sure that equipment is in good condition, inspect and test at frequent intervals. Inspect and test three phase cables that go to the equipment, the whole length of the cable. Inspect three phase plugs and sockets internally and externally. Locate cables where damage and impact is not likely and check connections for correct tightness and check crimps for no looseness. Vehicle and pedestrian movement is another possible source of damaged or broken connections. Do not position trailing cables where pedestrians will walk over the cables or pull pallet trucks over them. And forklift trucks and other vehicles will soon damage cables if allowed to run over them. Overhead cables can be a problem. Bad weather, storms, lightning and high winds can cause cable damage. Falling trees can cause broken neutrals and so on. I speak from personal experience on this one. The supply to my mother's house was damaged by high winds out in the Welsh mountains. The neutral connection was lost and every piece of electrical equipment in the house had to be replaced by the supply company. The fridge, the washing machine, the televisions and DVD players, the list went on and on. Everything. If a three phase neutral is lost, as shown in this video, then single phase circuits in the installation will experience voltage rises. These over voltages will exceed the 230 volts expected by attached equipment and may reach values of up to 400 volts or more, which can cause serious and permanent damage to equipment, with the possibility of significant overheating and fires. Electricity will attempt to find alternative paths to complete its circuit around the installation and back to the supply transformer. These different paths may include water pipes, attached metallic equipment and structural steelwork. There is also the risk to life if persons or animals touch energised metalwork. There are ways of protecting equipment from loss of neutral and other voltage disturbances. Voltage switches and monitoring devices are available. These will monitor for bad mains and interrupt the supply to equipment if over voltages are detected and act before the equipment is damaged. Thank you for watching, it really is appreciated and we hope that you found this video useful and informative. Please subscribe to our channel to get access to all of our videos and remember to click on notify to be sure of not missing our next video. And you will find even more information, videos and help on our website at learnelectrics.com. And don't forget, you can also type in Learn Electrics, or one word, into the YouTube search bar to go directly to our channel at any time from any computer. We are constantly adding new videos to our channel, so don't miss the next one. And once again, thank you for watching, and we hope to see you again very soon.